Hi, I'm Martin Modal, and uh, I build guitars by hand. There's something about guitars that, that you know, anybody who's a guitar geek, they know. They just move into you in a way that, that you can't really help. In one sense, you want the guitar to be transparent so that the person playing it comes through. I have kind of a, uh, a Buddhist idea of what work is for. Um, you know, of course we have to take care of ourselves. Of course we have to be responsible. Um, we have to make sure that we're not a burden on others. We have to make sure that we, you know, are able to take care of others and, and share and do all the things that good people do. Um, but it's also a means of developing ourselves as people, you know, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I think that I fell in love with this as much as I did. Yeah, I think these will look interesting. I just started getting more and more fascinated with guitars. I actually started with drums, and that's what I played professionally for most of the time, but, you know, much as I tried, I couldn't get that one that I wanted. It was just pretty expensive, and it was electric resonator. And it turns out that, you know, I, I stumbled into making something that was very different than, than was out there. And plus, I, I also didn't see, um, you know, what I was looking for exactly. A lot of the electric resonator guitars, if you know, like Dobros and National Guitars, and the ones that they, they were building as electrics were really mostly student models and stuff, and I wanted something that was a little, you know, a little more meat to it, so to speak. And so I just started drawing pictures. And, I mean, really what it comes down to is I started because I wanted one, and that's how the whole thing began. People who are very interested in it know what's going on with electric resonators, but a lot of people might not know quite what they are. We now have basically the rim that the plate will be sitting on. One of the things I started doing to uh, keep the Cheerios on the table, so to speak, was uh, working with a, a old friend of mine, Chris Tuvey, who uh, had been, a, you know, an arborist uh, and a tree trimmer, tree printer. Uh, around this area, and he's been doing the work for 30 plus years. There's everything there is to know about everything that grows in this whole area. There are a number of, of woods that can be used in guitar building that work wonderfully. Cherry and um, pear, there's flowering pear all around this area. I think maybe one of the reasons why people are liking these designs as much as they are is because these are very handmade, very unique, very American kinds of of things. I have these sound holes and there's a reason for that. Um, the inside of this is actually hollow. Uh, this is what's called a spider bridge resonator and you can imagine why it's called that from looking at it. Um, the bridge actually sits on this interesting little device and that's attached to what amounts to a speaker. And the strings go over the top and they rest on this bridge. And so what happens is when you pluck the strings, they vibrate this cone and uh, that's what produces the sound. This was living, you know, these were living things. And not only were they living themselves, but they had other things living in them. They actually really were parts 
of an ecosystem. And every ecosystem is like all of these levels and levels and levels of inter interconnectedness. And so the trees themselves were ecosystems. And so a lot of times in these builds, I want to leave something that lets people know that, that really reminds them that, you know, that, you know, this isn't some prepackaged thing that just showed up. But I started finding all kinds of things in the wood, different colors, and I was like, what caused that? And that's what all of these little marks are. These are all little places where branches were coming out of the tree. And uh, so I like that myself. I want you to be able to see that it's a real life, you know, living thing. Luthery is the art of building guitars. It's actually from the word lute. And uh, um, I think uh, the first time someone called me a luthier, I was like, wow, how cool is that? The fact that a lot of times when I'm doing this kind of thing, my hands are moving and, and these shapes will start coming out. And I didn't necessarily plan what it was going to be at the beginning. But the whole idea is, to me, just the process of using hand tools like this to do this is very meditative. And so if there is an inspiration to what you end up mm. seeing, it really is wordless. And I don't even know if I could describe it other than it's there. <laughs> This kind of a finish will end up looking pretty much different in every light that you look at it in. Four kinds of wood here. Ash, English walnut, black walnut, and alder. In a sense, you know, a guitar is is meant to be a means for that person to express themselves in their art um, and it's interesting because i build the things to be art in themselves you know each one of these notches is one of the frets I think people always think in terms of, of you know, this kind of craftsmanship, um, you know, as a, as a uniquely American thing. Uh, American luthiers are, are well respected all around the world, and there's a good reason for it. This is a radiusing block. It's cut to the. Uh, 12 inch radius that I want the fingerboard to end up at and um, I'm going to start with a very rough thing just to get rid of some wood relatively quickly and then we'll go through progressively finer and finer and finer all the way to uh, 600 grit. These little pyramids are what hold it in place. Truth is, I prefer each one of these, the headstocks anyway, being a little bit different. You know, 
I, I think maybe it's why a lot of people, you know, there, there's such, uh, seems to be such a movement of people who make things now. You know, more and more people want to create things with their own hands. Final details of, of you know just the the fine polishing and shaping around the fret ends, um, so that people's you know these brilliant guitar players and artists whose fingers are you know incredibly sensitive, uh, they feel everything, every little thing, and uh, you know what you want them to feel is nothing but smooth and silky, you know guitar magic. This is the thing that actually intimidates a lot of people who think about building guitars. Thinking about, oh my god, you carved the neck yourself? But, yeah, and it actually if you just, you know, and, and I think basically if you've played guitar, you know what it should feel like. And if you basically use these long sort of strokes that I'm, I'm doing and basically do it, do it to feel. First it was an idea, then it was a drawing, you know, then it was some pieces of wood. Then all of a sudden it transformed into this thing that it had never been before, you know, a musical instrument. You know, not only can you find something that you enjoy doing, but you can actually, you know, um, make a living at it. Uh, you can create something that's lasting. Um, you know, you can, you know, do it to a level where you're able to basically fulfill all the same things that you do from, you know, the, the standard idea of what a job is. The idea that learning is something that's really hard to do something that's unnatural or, you know, making something like this. To me, it's the most natural, most human thing there is. And so what I get out of it is, you know, trying to grow as who I am.
I think the people who actually own my instruments, I, when, I, when they come back to me like months later, I, I know I did it right. <laughs>